about six years ago now that I first discovered the skin cancer on my nose. I spent my teenage years as a lifeguard in Arizona, and I was very brown and pretty. Paying the price for that now. It's been, I think, five operations. The radiation treatment had damaged the bones in the top of my mouth, so they took a bone out of my leg. So I can always tell people, it doesn't matter where I am, I always have my foot in my mouth. I will be completing both a medical degree and also a PhD here at Stanford. I don't know yet what I want to specialize in, but um, I have some time to figure it out because I'm in my second year now. I think people go into medicine for a wide variety of reasons, and I think one part of it is the really human aspect because there's some part of our experiences and some part of our core that really wants to help people. Up until the last 10 years, medical students really didn't have authentic connections and interactions with patients, families, and caregivers until their third or fourth year of medical school. Over this last decade, Stanford and other schools have started to bring patients into the classroom. So what we're doing that's new is having students side by side with patients and experiencing their medical school curriculum from the angle of the patient who's living in the world, not only in clinic with a robe on or in the hospital gravely ill. So the Walk With Me course brings together the students who want to connect with patients, patients who want to connect with students, and then a curriculum that organizes their experience over a nine-month period. Then it's just like you. Michael and I, as far as I know, randomly assigned to be partners. We meet pretty consistently in the same spot, and we chat about everything um, from updates in school to how things are going with him, his health, but also the things we really do have in common that we've found that we love, writing and reading. When the class required us to leave an, what they called an artifact, we decided to come up with uh, writing a book together. He would write a chapter about himself, whatever he was reflecting on, and after I read his, I'd write about myself, um, my relationship with him, walk with me, medical school, anything that came to mind that kind of was sparked by what he had written. I grew content and accepted of changing into what I expected to be the final stage of my life. Sometimes I am simply being in the world, immersed in the now. I want to make it clear that this is perfectly adequate. Would Michael ever have imagined his life to be like this? Would he be surprised at the way he has shaped me as I am becoming a doctor? Perhaps in some years we will both be reflecting on our lives and thinking of the Stanford Fountain. And we will have those memories and feelings of contentment bubble over somewhere deep inside of us. I almost cried. I know. I got a little choked up. If students like Tara can take this experience into their future practice, they're just going to be better clinicians. Patients want a say in what goes on in their own health and their health care. And that starts with clinicians really being curious about their patients as human beings who have priorities that we can't know as clinicians without asking them. They just put us together and we were left to try and decide if we liked each other or not, which we were lucky that happened. And there are things that I wanted to talk about that really I didn't get to talk about with anyone else, the things I had gone through. To develop that friendship that wasn't rooted in knowledge, but was instead rooted in just who I am as a person, I think reaffirmed what I thought medicine would be like. To have that motivation that, you know, someone like Michael could have a better course of treatment, it really inspires me to, to do that and pass it forward in as many ways as I can.